imagine the silverback walked in to an area where the other gorillas and just stood and stood sort of erect until the community of gorillas recognized him and then they all fell in line. If he did that, if that's how he established dominance, and Robert does exactly the same thing, he walks into a room, everybody's chit-chatting, he stands at the front, he waits for everyone to acknowledge his presence, and then they start, well, that property is exactly the same. If the silverback came in and does what they do and bang their chest, well, they probably didn't establish dominance in exactly the same method, though they did establish dominance. So what we don't know, right, what requires, quote-unquote, further research, right, what we don't yet know is um, that particular property, right? So the precise way in which dominance was established, right? That's neutral. Right? We don't know the precise way in which dominance was established, right? Um, if it is the case that, so, well, I don't want to jump ahead, so I'll just leave it there. We don't know the precise way in which dominance was established. Let's say we had videotape of both Robert and the gorilla, um, and we look at both videotapes, we can say, uh, actually, no, they don't share. It becomes a negative property, right? They don't share, and I'll address this later, they don't precisely share the exact manner in which that dominance was established, though they do share the establishment of dominance, right? So I think that should be sort of obvious, right? I don't, there's nothing really complicated at all about that. Okay, so before I move on to example two, let me just slow down a little bit, go over this again. This might be extremely obvious, but I don't really know what your level of sort of receptivity to this information is, and I really want to make sure that this is solid before we move on. Three forms of um, analogies. First, positive analogy, A and B share properties. Second, negative analogies, A and B do not share properties. Third form, neutral, A and B may or may not share properties. We need to check and see. In the example of Robert quickly established dominance uh, like, a silverback, uh, um, like a silverback gorilla, positive relationship, both Robert and the gorilla establish dominance. Negative relationship, different sizes, different intellectual abilities, different, uh, what else did I say? Different sizes, different species, different um, intellectual abilities, things that they do not share. Neutral, the precise manner in which they established is unclear. We need to investigate further to be able to finally make an assessment of whether or not they share precisely the way in which dominance was established, right? So we've complicated our in initial um, a is like B pattern a little bit. It's still pretty, I think, uh, hopefully, it just should be very basic. Eventually, this is going to sort of progress outside of the, you know, the 6 through 12 grade range into like maybe undergraduate, then graduate, then master's, then professional, then uber nerd level, um, which is the level that I want to get you guys at, right? The uber nerd level. All right, so that's, that's example one. I think that's clear. All right, so let's go to example two. Also, the, the, the sort of direction behind this particular segment of the lecture series is a combination of many, many, many different um, statistical models that are used, scientific models that are used, mathematical and even logical models. I've synthesized all of those concepts based on just my own sort of research doing this over the years into um, a game that I've designed. Now, what I'm about to um, discuss is something that is uniquely mine. Um, I didn't borrow this concept or this idea or this game from any book. It's not out there in the world at all. It's something uniquely that, that I've constructed for pedagogical purposes. So this is specifically my, my concept, um, my idea, my game with respect to um, teaching students about analogical relationships. Um, I also have implemented this game myself to do my own research, right? This is, this is a great way to identify very complex patterns in the world, is implementing this. I use this all the time uh, in my own sort of, you know, research. I construct this game and try and make sense of patterns. Um, so now we're going to complicate it. Uh, now we're going to a next phase, right? We're going to take the same concepts, 
we're going to go to our next phase, implementing this game uh, that I designed. And I'll give you the name of the game in a second. So this is example two. Alright, this is example two. Um, we're going to say that R, the letter R, is going to equal what I call a random property generator. Remember we said um, positive analogical relationships, A and B share properties, P1 through Pn? Imagine that you have this machine, or this function, this thing, R, and R can create Pn. It can create P1. It can create O1. It can create O4. This random property generator can create any random property. That's what it does, right? So it's very simple. The idea is we need to create a function, and that function can immediately randomize all the properties. And then you just hit the button, it goes, you press it, click, and you got P4. That's basically the idea. The idea. Okay, so the random property generator, specifically, let me write that down. Right? And this, in this particular example, the random property generator can generate properties P1, P2, P3, and itself. It can generate itself. Right? So you can have a random property generator, it generates P2. You can have a random property generator, it generates P1. Or you could have a random property generator and it generates another random property generator. Right? So that's the idea. So in this example, it can generate P1, P2, P3, or it can regenerate itself. R. Now, I want to identify um, the basic structure that this game is going to take. Right? This is alpha, and this top level is what's, what I've identified. Again, I've, I'm, I've constructed this myself. This doesn't come from a book anywhere. This is my own, this is my own game, logical game that I've designed. Um, and you'll see how cool it gets. It gets extremely complicated, but it's a good way of sort of problem solving. It's, it's, it's an excellent problem solving sort of device. This top level is known as the group level. If I can spell G-R-O-U-P level. This top level is known as the group level. This is a Greek symbol for A. It's called alpha. So this is the alpha group. right? This bottom segment is the property level. Right? So we have the group level at the top. We have the property level at the bottom. This property level is divided into four sections. It's pretty simple. Group A, properties, go here. And we do that with B, um, with beta, gamma, and, and delta. OK, so what I want you to do is I've reproduced the exact same image at the bottom of page four on the top of page five. So with the information that we have, just flip, just flip over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through and explain this so that you have an understanding of how this is structured, one. Second, how it relates to the stuff that we've already discussed so far, which is pretty simple. Two, and then we'll complicate it. So before we complicate it, I want you to have a, a clear understanding of how this functions. So let's, let's populate the properties, right? So we have alpha group, we have beta group, we have delta, uh, gamma, we have delta, right? Okay, we have beta, we have gamma, and we have delta. Okay, they each have four properties per group. Okay, so alpha has P1 as a property, P2 as a property, beta has P1 as a property, P2 and P3. Gamma has uh, P3 and P1 and then delta has two random property generators. So it looks exactly the same, P1, P2, P1, P2, P3, P3, P1, two random property. Okay, so just so that, well, then I'm explaining, right? So assessing the analogical relationships, let's, let's just make an assessment. This is purely so that you have an understanding of what you're looking at, right? So the alpha group, right? And I'll move out the way so you can see this, L-P-H-A. The alpha group, this group here, Let's look at the, the account. The first thing is a recognition that 